some of the leaf litter in. And my trails may extend 50 metres from the mound, bringing all the sticks and leaves and other leaf matter into the mound. And in this, I'm helped by my partner. A lot of people think that I do the work alone, but that is not true. I get lots of help from my partner. I build a big mound that might be a metre high and I have to wait for the organic matter, the leaves and the, the branches and the stems to decompose. So every day I have to scratch and move it all around, maybe dig a hole in the middle. Early in the morning there's a hole in the center of the mound. And then in the afternoon, I put it all back. <laughs> and then I come back early in the morning and greet my love again. <laughs> And we do the same, we dig it out again. So we started building the mound, digging the hole, in about June. Probably takes two months for the leaf matter and the leaves to have disintegrated enough to form an even deposit. So then we have to start thinking about what we're going to do with it. We still have to tend it every day. But come September we start attending to it a lot. And we have to make sure that the temperature of the mound is suitable for the incubation of the eggs that we lay in the mound. So how do we measure the temperature? Some people have said that we measure it with the bill of our beak by lowering it into the mound. Well, we think there's no temperature sensor in that hard bill, so that's probably not feasible. Other people think maybe there's some 
they put the face into the mound and measure the temperature. We don't think they do that either. We think what they do is they put their whole head in and bend it and the top of the head, which is somewhat sparse of feathers, is where they measure the temperature. And they need to make it between 30 and 34 degrees mm. for the optimum temperature. So once that temperature is reached, they keep it constant by every day doing that same process of uncovering the mound from the afternoon, which is rounded, into either a hollow, a saucer shape, or into a moat shape. And let the sun also assist with the temperature regulation of the mound. But come September, they start to think about the next step of the process. So they would have been opening up the mound. And again, both birds are working together. Sometimes the male might be a bit earlier and might pick a little bit faster. temperature constant again. So they lay an egg every four days and they lay between five and 20 eggs during the season. Wow. So that's a fair period of time. And these eggs are approximately half a meter, so even up to a meter below the surface where they stay warm. And importantly, as protected as possible because there are other things that like those eggs. Bobtail goannas, bob, uh, southern heath monitors, ravens, currawongs, magpies, but now more particularly foxes. So the mallypal has to keep looking over its shoulder for the fox and then runs away, as you can see in that photo over there. The fox oh. comes up even during the day while they're working the mound. But more particularly, they come at night in the stealth of the dark. And even though the mound is now covered quite high, they attempt to dig in and expose the eggs. And sometimes they are too successful and they run away with two eggs. <coughs> sometimes they give up because it is hard work for a fox to dig a hole that deep. But unfortunately, too many eggs are taken that way. Anyway, the male and the female keep working the mound, keep laying the eggs every four days, keep turning the soil over. This is hard work, but I have very strong feet. I don't mind this work. Every now and then, I pick a little bit of an insect out of the ground that's there that I can eat as a bit of a delicacy. Then at other times of day I go and feed in the rest of the scrub and I may have to put more leaf litter and branches onto the mound. And then at the end of the day, I fly into my tree to roost. There I am safe from the fox until I come back onto the ground. But I have to tend my chicks all day. But starting about December into January, February, the chicks start to mature and their typical 
germination period is about 60 days. But they're now a metre to half a metre below the surface. So they have to climb up from the, surf, from the, from the underside of the mound. So they break the egg that they're in. You see how big the egg is? It's bigger than a chook egg, bigger than a... Um, or about the same size as a duck egg and smaller than an emu egg. With a, it has a little bit of an air pocket in it and they break the egg and then they sit on their backside and try and pull the sand down on top of them and they have to stop every 10 minutes to gain some more energy. So it may take 20 to 30 hours for them to dig up from the bottom of the nest where they've been laid to the top. So the parents continue working on the mound. They really don't know what's happening underneath. So they keep scratching it out. that that's what they have done, I'm thinking. And they are so frightened, they just jump up and run away and then come back, do it all again. But that chick is all on its own. No mum and dad to look after it. They have to run off the mound into the nearest scrub, find a place to, to dry off a bit, then start eating and flying away or running away and hopefully evading the monitor, the eagle, the carawong, and particularly the fox. So the data shows that approximately 1% of all eggs laid survive for chicks for more than a year. Wow. So it's a very four, poor percentage. So what we need, what Mal needs, is a lot of help needs a lot of help controlling those deadly, dastardly foxes. We need to prevent them coming there, digging up the mound, stealing the eggs and eating the chicks when they do hatch. Because otherwise, they will, we will never see them again and our land will be the poorer.